thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for RCC for hosting this. Um, this piece was written by Pablo Olavaria, a Spanish guy I met last year in Darmstadt at the uh, Darmstadt summer, summer Courses. And there was a trumpet composer workshop with um, Rebecca Sonda and Milica Djordjevic. And every trumpet player got paired up with the trump, uh, composer to write new pieces in three days. So this was the result of a uh, th three-day three course. And what was interesting for me was that the knowledge about extended techniques and about how trumpet works is uh, not very well known for composers and also for trumpet players. So I decided to start my research about exploring the instrument and the possibilities of the instrument and started about making it more, trying to make it more accessible for trumpet players and composers. So, first of all, before I get to extended techniques, I will talk a little bit about how the trumpet actually works. So, you can, you can see there's like a sound system, like this is like the speakers, then the lips are like an interface, just pushing through the signals, and the signals coming from, from the body. So I control the air and the airspeed with my tongue and mouth cavity. And this way I can just produce a normal note. Now this is a very complex coordination between fingers, lips, the tongue, mouth cavity, the breath, breath and air support. So each of these individual parts I can control and create, create new sounds. So basically the trumpet is built on the, the overtone series. That's basically an open, open position. So now I have three valves. That means I can have seven different positions. And through these seven different positions, it's possible to play chromatically. But basically, it's a natural trumpet and built in seven natural trumpets. I brought a little uh, plastic natural trumpet for you today. And this is a good demonstration. This has no, no keys. It's twice the length, so it would sound an octave lower. It starts on the, on the second partial. This one starts on the second partial, and this on the fourth. <laughs> this is actually built for children. It's a new program for America, press for beginners. So, uh, so <laughs> small children will learn on playing trumpet on these. It's actually pretty hilarious having 10 children in one room just trying to get the sound out of these things. <laughs> so who wants to try it later can, can try. So basically, this is seven, seven times this in seven different, different keys. So today is also about exploring new, new trumpet sounds. And this is kind of a lecture, but I want to like, welcome everyone to have an open discussion about this and questions. So whenever something is not clear or you want to have more clarification, just, just let me know. So the five techniques I focused in my, my master research last year, uh, I didn't mention this, I was a student in the, in the Royal Conservatory the last two years doing the Master of Licht. And um, I focused on these five techniques, so pedal notes, half verbs, split tones, singing while playing, and air noises, and that's the one these are the ones that I will focus today. So this is a harmonic overtone series on the trumpet that um, I just played for you. I'll do it again. So it starts on the second overtone. The, the first one is, is not an instrument, officially at least. Yeah, and there were the color changes. You see, it's uh, quite difficult to play in this, in this range. And uh, this is a demonstration of all the seven positions. So you see, these are all the notes on the first position until the seventh position that are possible, the overtone series, to make, uh, to make chromatically, chromatic playing possible. So now about extended techniques. The first thing that trumpet players want to play is of course higher, higher and louder always. So they want to extend range. But I found out that with, with the teacher Marco Blau, who was a, also a specialist in pedal, pedal register, 
like the first piece that I just played was based on the second pedal register, it's possible to have at least three more octaves below the actual trumpet register. So F sharp is uh, the lowest note officially. This is like in classical music, the, the lowest note. But then the first pedal register would go one octave lower. If I go back to this one here, so I can only switch between partials and then go dramatically down with the valves. You see between the first and second overtone, uh, there's the octave is it's an octave and not a, not a tritone. So from the F sharp to the low C, I have to bend it down. That's why the sound is getting getting more unstable and more and more nasal. <laughs> Because I bend the notes down, and basically the C sharp I play over the C is bent down from the second overtone. So the interval between C sharp and the, and the fundamental note is actually quite small, but it feels very big when you play the trumpet. This is uh, maybe something good, good for composers to know, it's for trumpet players, that in this range the notes are possible, but not in very fast passages. So then would come the, the second pedal register. And for here, for, for lower notes, the lip needs more space in the mouthpiece to vibrate, because lower vibration is, is lower pitch. But at some point, the pedal register is getting so low that there's not enough space in the mouthpiece for the lip to vibrate anymore. So what I do is, I pull out the lower lip so that the upper lip has more space in the mouthpiece to vibrate. And this, every player has a, like a different gap, but everyone has to find, for the, find out for themselves where this, where this gap is, where you have to switch out. So I can turn around like this and you see it better. So yeah, only, only one lip is, it's also possible to do it with the lower lip, some people also do that, but for me it works best to do it with the, with the upper lip. Sorry, so the, uh, the pedal tones, um, it's basically the size of the mouthpiece that determines how low you can go, because that, that no, gives you... The, the, the speed of the vibration of the lip controls yeah, the pitch. Yeah, but that's related to the size of the mouthpiece, isn't it? Because the bigger the mouthpiece is, the more space there is for a bigger uh, exactly, vibration. Yeah. So, for example, if you, if you carry... Uh, mouthpieces for like just bigger mouthpieces that fit into it's something. It's easier, easier to play lower enough. Okay. Or will sound a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. So th is that something people like trumpet players do? Like mm -hmm. carry like bigger mouthpieces that would work for? This is uh, some kind of a fetish of some trumpet players. Have, like, Sorry? This is some kind of a fetish for some trumpet players. They have like okay. a lot of mouthpieces for every different occasion. Ah, okay. But, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I, was yeah. I, I like to use one mouthpiece that mm -hmm. I'm used to, so I don't have to change for each mouthpiece mm -hmm. all the time. And during the piece, obviously. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some people do this and have like 10 mouthpieces on the music stand, but mm -hmm. so you have to get used to it every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So, so these are two pedal registers, and there's one more that is kind of not sounding very well, but I will try anyway. <laughs> But this solo, it, it's possible for sure at some point. Um, we're all working on it, but it's still uh, under development. No, so, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically you have the trumpet register from second fundamental to let's say to the ninth, tenth overtone usually, plus three more objects at the bottom that are possible. And um, for composers, I guess it's. How many composers do we have here? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> How many trumpet players do we have here? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Only the ones who are playing tonight. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll make this more for composers then. <laughs> um, so there's these two things that is good to know for composers. One is that the gap between the second and first overtone from C sharp to C takes a lot of work for a trumpet player. This. 
Because I'm jumping from the first fundamental to the second overtone and bend the second overtone to the lowest possible position down. So it's interval that feels while playing very quite big. And then the second thing is around I do it around pedal F sharp, which is I don't know which frequency, but uh, I have to pull out my lip. So <laughs> These are the two weak spots on the instrument that uh, composers just have to be aware of while, while writing for this. Any questions about pattern notes so far? No? So okay, so we have more, more range, which is, which is great. Then the next thing is the instrument. We can modify the instrument. And this one we play with vibes to decide which of these, which of these seven positions we're taking. So, and I can man <laughs> manipulate the, the valves as long as I press them. Of course, open, open position I can modify, but e every time I press one valve, I can decide if I press it fully or any way in between. And uh, with this, I can create like filtering, filtering of the overtones, so the higher partials get filtered and, and softer, and that's why the sound's getting more soft. And depending where, how far I go, I think some people like to divide it into like seven parts. So officially there's like seven different positions that can create different sound colors. I try to do it super soft, uh, super slow. It's very subtle, but I can I can filter the overtones in, in the sound. So this here we're doing always with the first one. Right That's now, this is an example, but it's possible with every note. is in open position, but the C is also in the fifth position. So I can copy the C. I, I can like borrow this note from a different different overtone series to make them all possible, except the low C that it's is not not in any of the other Overtone series. But it's not possible to do a uh, speed meandle uh, between them, like switch between them easily? Is it? Sure. Oh, okay. Then you'd like a tremolo. and make a tremolo with that, yeah. So that's about half hours. The next step would be from range to instrument. The next step is to modify the lips. And the lips, the lips normally vibrate, but I can, I can block parts of the lip and make not the whole lip vibrate, but only like a part, or make different vibrations in the lip. So I can get two partials that are neighboring each other. So I can say, I can make sound the second and the third overtone 
at the same time by manipulating my, my list. So if I start on the third overcon in G, I can blend in the lower, lower C. And it's called split tones. And of course I can always, from every partial, go seven positions down. between two partials. So I focused on composers who like, wrote like some splits between like not neighboring partials, which is or notes that are not in one of the harmonic overturn series. So you can decide for one of the positions of the seven and then take two partials that you want to have split. Is that clear? Many composers don't no? Not Can you sing for long? Like can you split how and sing simultaneously? <laughs> Can you do like three notes? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what do you want, major or minor? <laughs> neighboring overtones, if that's also possible. So you, you, can, you can split between partial 5 and 6, yeah. or between 4 and 5, yeah. or 3 and 4, but you can't split between 3, 3 and 7. Yeah. I think it's possible to switch to over jump one, one partial, but there's, there's nothing official yet. Yeah. So if you, if you come up with this and no jump player will say that it's possible, this might work like on one day, but there's nothing that will work on, on stage. Right now, maybe in a few years, <laughs> you never know. So of course, because we have kind of the same notes, we can also play the same notes with different fingerings, and because of the different positions, the split will also change. So if I play a, a middle middle G, I can play it in open position, and I can play it in sixth position. in between is at some point very small and at mm -hmm. some point you, you can't hear the notes anymore yeah. and it will be like there's other other sounds happening in this register mm -hmm. so I just try going up the series. So I start on the second over drum.
what you see is not, you can't hear the actual notes anymore. It's more like a distorted sound color that's appearing. But if you come up, if you write a piece for a trumpet player and you say you want to split between eight and nine, he will probably say, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask him to try it if you want that sound. You, you can ask for that. You yeah. can say, is there a better way to ask for that? You can say I want I want a high C like the eighth overtone. You you say it, I yeah. want distort distorted it or split tone, but you can't expect to have like to actually have to have actually this yeah. major second audible. Okay. Maybe at some point it will work. Yeah, maybe someone. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you can just ask for it and then say whatever happens happens. Sort of yeah, exactly. Okay. So then, tr normal trumpet playing, we do the ex exercise to find the center of the node. We can bend the node. So if you combine this with split tones, that means the interval of, a, let's say, um, a fifth gets, gets smaller. And this creates a different kind of distortion. To make it louder, you mean? Well, to so in this case, like what you did, and if you, you were doing a split tone between three and four, that the four was the dominant one, and that the ghost tone was a three. If it's possible to make a dominant one the, the three, which is more audible, and the ghost one the four, so the upper one. Usually, if trumpet players start practicing this, it's easier to have the main note and switch down to the next partial. It's just easy on the instrument, mm -hmm. but I guess it would be. Possible. Yeah. So what you ask me is to let's say start on the second partial and then switch to the third one. Yeah, yeah. Once you get into one sound, there's opening up so many more possibilities. And once you don't think you figure it out, it's, it's never the end. And uh, it always goes on. So I think there's so many possibilities. And yeah. I think the more trumpet players and composers have this, this conversation about, about it, I think the more, the more sounds are possible. Mm -hmm. So this is also what I want to try to do with the t-shirt research to, to get in common uh, communicate with, with composers about this and, and talk about this because I think often trumpet players and composers don't have this talk about what's actually possible. And then composers write something for for trumpet players and trumpet players can play it. So trumpet players get frustrated and then composers get frustrated because they don't hear what they want to write. And then the audience doesn't like it because they don't have a clue what's going on. So I would like to have like an open, open conversation about this, so everyone knows what goes on. Also, trumpet players for sure have to work a lot on this. I mean, most classical trained trumpet players don't learn this in school, and some figure it out on them on their own when they if they want to. But most of them have teachers that also don't know it. So, yeah. So after manipulating the the lips, the next step would be to go closer inside and, um, for example, add, add something. So we can add the, the vocal chords and play and sing on the, at the same time. So now I have uh, different, different options. I can play one note and sing higher or lower, so manipulate the singing. Or I can sing the same pitch and play higher or lower, or do both together. But I will start with like playing playing one note and just let's say I will 
start on the same note and go one of the floor. <laughs> in the open series of C. If I now switch half step higher to A flat, then the instrument would switch into the open series of, of A flat. So I can kind of create harmony, at least that's how I feel in my body. Sung in tune, for that. <laughs> but it's, it's a different thing. Um, so one thing one thing that's amazing is if you do microtone singing, you can sing and play the same pitch and go out of out of center and create uh, create beatings in the sound. Singing, 
which is a pity. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so you have to be more aware of, of your of your ear, yes. But it, it doesn't I mean it depends how if I sing lower, my throat is more open, so I lose more air. So if I sing higher I can more compress it and and use less air. But if my throat is very open then of course I need to breathe out more often. Anything else? Yeah, just a question about the meaning. Are you aware if it's consistent with kind of the frequency difference of the meaning? That I don't ask this, ask this question. Right. So when you have com like combination tones, is the meaning consistent with the, the difference in the frequencies when you sing? Um, the way I hear this, I, I, it's kind of a tough question. I'm not sure if I completely get it. I mean, I, I try to listen to to the rhythm and try to get it like. Mm -hmm. It's still under development, so it's it's hard to like keep yeah. one rhythm and change in the rhythms. I think it's possible because it's just getting used to to the voice making so small changes and also yeah. staying staying at this microtonal pitch mm -hmm. singing, yeah. which which is possible after a while. So um, I think I don't didn't get your question completely. Yeah, um, when you play two pitches, uh, you get combination tones. Oh, yeah. The difference okay. between yeah. between the frequencies and like. Absolute sense where if you have 440 hertz playing against 440 hertz, you're going to get a combination of 1 hertz and 800. Um, uh, I was just wondering if you're singing, when you're singing these pitches, if, if you're aware of any sort of uh, kind of adherence to that rule. So if you're singing under a pitch that's 200 hertz below, are you going to get a combination tone? Uh, no, I just yeah. tried to hold two notes okay. at the yeah. same time. I was just wondering if you're aware of any of the technical kind of... I don't no, but I would like to, to yeah. talk with you about this and you know more about this. It's, it's yeah. interesting for me, for sure. Yeah. Um, to what, what's, what, what kind of scale do you have for like, to, like how, how fine can the readings get? Like how, to what degree can you control the readings? Like, um, what, what resolution do you have? What's the <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't have a mathematical uh, answer for you. I mean, no, I, I get it doesn't have to be mathematical, but like just like how small can the beating get and how large can you perceive? Like you personally. I mean, at some point the larger gets, at some point will go to a minor, minor, minor second, and so you perceive yeah, it as so like inter interval. What's, what's the largest that you've explored so far? Between mi mi minor second or. Uh -huh. in so I try sing an open, I sing a fifth, and then go higher, and you just see. I try to do it super slow, so okay. we just experiment. <laughs> But I can't say I want this rhythm mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So then I try to get go by an interval okay. and say I want to get like a, a quarter tone mm -hmm. be, be, below the C or eighth note or. So like the composer writes for you, then maybe 
it would be, it would be more idiomatic for you if he like um, does this adjusting sort of process, like going from this. If if you if you a certain interval, then you sing together with the trumpet, and then you start off. Uh, maybe the, the it goes a little bit higher, and then the beating is like across and it goes from this. Yeah. Sort of. I mean, you, you can write down the rhythm and then the trumpet player has to figure it out on, on its own, <laughs> right, on the, which not to sing yeah. to, to get the sound you want. Mm -hmm. So you, you can do this. Or you can say, I want, I want to have sung this, this pitch, and then you'll see if, yeah. if you get the result you wanted. Okay. But the clearer you have it, the, the more the trumpet player can work on, on this. Okay. Uh, could I comment on that? Sure. Because um, I think as composers, we, um, we're sort of obsessed about how we want to communicate what, we're, what we want. Um, for example, if we were to write the, the number of cents or whatever, uh, that might be helpful in one case for some uh, performers. But um, it, I mean, my, my uh, uh, idea would be to like, so it would, it would change from piece to piece. If you want a, a, a beating that's very like, uh, Exact. Uh, you could write like rhythms, maybe, but that's. But like, for example, graphic notation might be even easier for some performers in certain uh, situations, maybe, um, rather than like ha have a um, rhythmic sort of thing. But I mean, because as you said, it's really hard to control the the rhythms of the beats. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, like so, it would change from uh, piece to piece or from situation to situation how you write that for the performer. Yeah, I mean, also it also almost depends about about context. Yeah. yeah. So where in the piece it's coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So also about the register. I mean, on low C, it's quite easy. If you do like much higher, it's obviously much much mm -hmm. harder. Mm -hmm. So it's about the context that you build it in. Mm -hmm. So and you can create the context to make it more accessible for the player. Mm -hmm. You can make it easier for him, or you can make it very hard. Mm -hmm. And the easier it fits in the context for him, the, the, the better more, result. The more possible it is yeah. that he actually will, will do what you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it will be very dependent on the trumpet player. Yes. You yeah. cannot just ask it. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> so that would mean you have to work together at once. And then I would suggest yes. find the easiest, mm -hmm. most practical. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's also my goal that composers and trumpet players, or it doesn't matter trumpet players, but all musicians, work closer, closer together and really talk about this. Because mm -hmm. when I work with composers, I get lots of ideas what's possible. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff that you were asking about singing and split tongues. I haven't tried this before, so mm -hmm. now I get new ideas about what, I, what actually is possible. Mm -hmm. And also this first piece I played, we only figured out because I played this one sound, and he was like, oh, can you also turn and breathe? And oh, can mm -hmm. you also sing with this? And I didn't come up with this, mm -hmm. but, but he did by combining different things. Mm -hmm. And this is only possible because of communication and exchange ideas. So the closer you work with the performer, the, the more you will get what you want at the end. And not every classical tra trained musician, drum player, will be able to do this on the spot. Mm -hmm. I think everyone can learn this. And also in school I did this research, I was more focused on drum players, how they can learn it. So um, I wrote like, exercises for them, how they can develop these skills. And so I think everyone has the cap capabilities of, of learning that. Yeah. I have a question. Um, going back to the overtones, uh, does the speed of the air, yeah, the speed of the air, uh, has to <coughs> do a lot with the splitting of the tones in general, and how how the speed of the air can affect, in, is, what kind of effect can it give? The speed of air. Yeah. I mean, this, the, the, air, the air is the same because I can only, I can only produce one, one speed of air. I can't I can split the air in two parts. I can only block the lip and then make two different vibrations, two different speeds of vibrations in the lip. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what creates the, the next, next overtone. That's why it's hard to jump overtones because automatically the slow vibration or faster one will jump to the next overtone. So. Um, but but the airspeed is is const constantly the same. Is that means pressure by the jumps. Like no, air pressure or more like the force that comes from the, the body which It's not the pressure you put, but it's the Actually I, I need less air because it's more resistance there. I block the lip, so the lip vibrates less, so I need less air to make it vibrate actually. 
if that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad was just curious about that. Yeah. So that's playing and singing. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I was wondering if I have anything about playing and singing more, but um, I, of course I can now we now we had one stable note and sing or playing high or lower. So it's also possible to to do the both together at the same time. <laughs> and singing in the same direction. Or I can do contrary movement. And this is just practice getting coordination between playing and singing at the same time. But yeah, feel free to imagine a lot. <laughs> um, so now we're the lips, the the vocal chords. Now the last possibility I found is to not play with sound, but to, I mean, not, not actually pitch, but only have air, air noises. <coughs> so blowing air to the instrument. I can control this pitch by, everyone can do this with their, with their own mouth by changing the mouth cavity with the front and the back of the, of the tongue, I can create different, different sounds. So the front of the tongue is more like and the back is more like So with combinations of this, I can, I can create any, any sounds you want. So any sound you can do, do this on the shower or something, it's fun. Uh, every sound you can do with your mouth, a child player can project to the instrument. But nothing is happening in the instrument, everything is happening in the, in the mouth cavity. There's a slight pitch though, right? Can you change that with the mouth? Yeah. And funny enough, open position is is half a, half a step higher? Mm -hmm. Is it high? Mm -hmm. I don't know why, why this phenomenon is. It's also pedal, pedal nose. It's actually a half step lower. If I don't correct it and I have to like push it up. I don't know why, and I, no trumpet builder could explain it to this right now. To know why what is happening, but it's something instrument that is is different and changes the pitch. So if you write for air noises, it will sound half a step higher than. How smoothly can you transition between like air sounds and um, pitch? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> But don't expect this to work on stage. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not like a clarinet. I'm, I mean, I'm not saying clarinet is easier, but I think this, this, this particular thing is a little easier to come out of this uh, nothing into a sound. Can you do a flutter tongue while they're uh, just blowing air? Uh, can you breathe in uh, through the trumpet? With flutter tongue or without? Uh, I'll skip, yeah, first without. Um. You can't really hear the flutter tongue when you breathe in, can you? 
It's quite hard to make the tongue like such a. Can you like like? I was going to say snort. Basically, like a snort. Snort. Like. <laughs> but obviously, there's a lot of air coming in, so yeah. it's very short. But but be careful with this because. We we use oil for all the ah, so okay. the more we within the mm -hmm. the higher we get on stage. But <laughs> <laughs> depends when the piece of view of the beginning and my view of the end. So now I can use also the sound and manipulate my tongue. I can use like a, a tongue ram or a tongue um, what's that name? Tongue slap. <laughs> So basically, I, I ram my tongue into into the mouthpiece and create the sound. It's much much cooler if you have a close microphone and a PA system. Then it sounds like a cool kick drum. So yeah. can you can you maybe do like half slap, half thumb? Like you know what I mean? Like. Half slap, half tone, like I'm moving, it's like, but it's more of tone, actually, it's more resonance. Uh, but you mean, like, as an articulation, it's supposed to be yeah. at the same time? Yeah. So, like, like, ordinary, but like, articulation, actually. So, you mean a click, like? Yes. But why playing? You know, like, tone? Dumb. Yeah. With, with, a, with an actual pitch, with, with a yeah. normal, normal plane? Yes. Is it possible to breathe out and do the click at the same time? Can you do it? <laughs> at first it's the K is the... K, yeah. But then you can also just say two. Yeah. And have different kinds of articulation. That's, you can say a very hard T or a very soft D. <laughs> but I will check it out if it works, but I can't demonstrate it right now. So. Can you imitate that voice into the trumpet? Mm -hmm. Which voice? Just a voice, just as if you were talking into the trumpet. <laughs> so very audible speech. I mean, quite. So yeah, anything that you can do with your mouth, you can just project with the instrument. Well, can you do? Let's see with the slap tone. Can you do that outside of the the octave that you're in? It's. The step down now is only the seven positions that the instrument has. Yeah. If you want higher or sl slower pitch, then it's only with the clicks that you do in your mouth. So. Mm. But now the pitch is only controlled by the instrument, and you only have, you, you can't switch in the own series with this. Any more questions about this? Any thoughts, ideas? Can I ask like other things you can try? Maybe sure. like if you could whistle, like if you were whistling outside the trumpet and then uh, s s whistles into it, and then the, I just want to see what happens to the yeah. Well, you need the space to have the whistle sound. I, I mean, if you if you go close, then the air gets blocked. Yeah, like so you have the have sounds happening here. Uh -huh. and It would have to be a sudden, like, yeah. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's that sound? It's the, um, when you hear the... That's when the, pulling when, the, when the lips, because I, I now do with inhaling the whistle, ah, you're pulling, yeah. and then the lips touch the mouthpiece, and you hear the inhaling sound. Um. <coughs> Yeah.
Well, maybe it's possible to, to practice whistling and have more focused airstream, so it's going right mm -hmm. into the mouthpiece. We'll check it out. Mm -hmm. Or use a recorder. <laughs> <laughs> or use a different instrument, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to see the boundaries, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one thing I also did in my research last year was um, record each technique and have it in, uh, and try to have visuals of the sound, so I did spectrum analysis. So who's from technology here? <laughs> so this will be the moment where you know more than I about this. So basically is, this is a normal, I think, middle G. So you see the G here, and the, on the whole it series. So the G, the octave, the third partial, fourth, fifth, sixth, and, and so on. And what was fascinating for me to, to see, I play one note, but all the other overtones are actually also louder in the, in the sound, which was for me, I just didn't know, so for me, this was last year pretty, pretty new. So this was pretty exciting. And then to see the differences between the sounds. So this is a normal pitch. This is, this is the pedal, pedal register, how it would look like. So the overtones are still there, but of course because it's lower, you have still the octave, the third, the fourth, the fifth, but because it's an octave lower, you have many, many more partials. And that's why it's something also more, more aggressive. This is half first. I think it's great to see how the sound is filtered. So the normal sound, the actual pitch would be softer, but here it's louder and all the other overtones are, are kind of softer and filtered. Yeah, and here I have no clue what's going on. It's the tones. I don't know if, if you have two, maybe someone can help me with that, have two overtone series. So if I play G and C, do I have the overtone series of G and the overtone series of C, or does the interval create a new overtone series in its own. I, th I think it's yeah. both, and they interact, the, yeah. the Probably partials Probably interact. Probably. Sorry? Probably the combination. Yeah. That's where the combination tones come from. That's what I mean. yeah. 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 There's interference between the patterns, and some overtones get softer, some get louder. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was really exciting for me. And this is singing while playing. And air noise. And this is uh, just a different picture of normal sound. Here's the pedal, pedal notes. This was in a recording going, going one octave lower. This, this is the moment from, from normal, normal pitch, the transition into, into split tone. This is playing and singing. And this is air noise. And because this was, for me, just looking quite cool, I showed this to a, to a friend of mine who's a fine artist in, in Berlin. And she was also pretty, pretty amazed by, by the sounds and, and the visuals. So now I'm coming to my second, this was like my first part of the research that I did last year in school. And now my new research idea is to make a big performance combining different art forms with trumpet extended techniques. So I would like to write pieces that are based on each of these techniques. So I have five techniques. And um, in my masters, we had five trumpet players. So for each trumpet players, I, I will, I'm writing now um, solo pieces for, for each of them combining extended techniques. And having these visuals, my, my friend will then will make for each technique one painting that will be um, 360 degrees kind of installation, art installation in the room based, based on, on these, these pictures. And I want to create a, a combination or a show different different angles of, of these sounds. It's not only audible, but you can also like see them and see the differences. So I'm, I'm very curious about this right now. Um, yeah, so this was the, the first part of the presentation. 
And um, if there are any more questions, then. Um, have you tried Boeing techniques on your Boeing techniques? Yeah. No. You can do it. Bo Boeing techniques? Yeah. yeah. Like what? With the, with the cello. No, I haven't. <laughs> you think it works? Yeah, it works. I've tried it. Nice. You can get different notes. Oh, okay. It's interesting. Yeah. Which, which notes? Um, I didn't really, really get in there, but it was like an experimental music concert and I just got a trumpet and started going. <laughs> <laughs> it works, yeah. Oh, yeah. Does it, when, you, when you play, does it affect the playing? Um, when it plays I didn't play and go the same. Yeah. Where do you burn? On the bell. Oh. Yeah, okay, but here. Yeah, because it's quite free, so yeah. you can expect it to vibrate. But if you, if you play low or you play highest uh, and you bow one No, it doesn't work on the body, it just works on the top. No, but here, yeah, but if you, if you play... I think it would, it would be easier if you were playing and there were like yeah. two people yeah. bowing or something. I have a bow. Shall we try it? <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you bow. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, we'll try it now. Okay. <laughs> I know, just try it down. Uh, <laughs> I think you'll have to hold like uh, uh, there, like in the middle, with one hand. No, no, the, the trumpet. So you can, Me? Yeah, but as he's playing. Um, then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So maybe. Like this part? Oh, on, on, on the rim? On the rim? Yeah. Like here? Yeah. Well, uh, like that's like yeah. this thing. Sure. Yeah. Okay, like this. Right. You probably put a lot of pressure on people for doing Yeah, it's probably just then. Let's try it. Try it. Because this is a violin box. I think I held it just like that. Like this? Yeah. Okay. No, like hold it up and then just go like that. Uh, like this. Yeah. Have to play the trumpet. But like because, how is he going to play? <laughs> no, but like one person. I was doing it by myself. We don't need a trumpet for playing. I don't know. Do you, yeah. you want to try it? presenting old instruments. And we're looking for composers that would write a piece. Uh, we found one new piece, and, and I did another piece, working only with this instrument. So having this, but only one overtone series. So. So this is all notes you have. There's, there's not more. This is only, only these few notes. Can you so, bend? Hmm? You were bending with the, uh, I mean. This is all the notes you have. Okay. So you can play chromatic or you can... 
What do you do? Sorry. Hello, Mouse. You have also these, yeah. yeah. But you can you can control them a lot. Because with the valves you can control it, but that's just it's just one tube. So I wanted to write, to write a piece for this, but the challenge was to have this limited tone material. So what is possible to do? And at the time I also listened to a lot, lot of sonology concerts with spatialization and electronic music. So I wanted to create a more surround sound experience to, to make the instrument more and more interesting. So it was seven trumpet players, they were surrounded the audience. And um, yeah, I wanted to demonstrate the, where the instrument is actually coming from because it was only used as a communication instrument at the beginning, as signals for, I don't know. <laughs> only like, oh shit, there's sound coming and we have to like <laughs> Um, or was was just used to to for kings to like celebrate and say okay someone important is coming. So I was trying to do a modern kind of fanfare and then have a more electronic setup where it's more about the all sounds together at the same time, but only working with one with this very limited material. And also I did a recording summer of the piece and. Um, tried how external techniques can work on, on very old instruments. I played on a real instrument, not on this plastic one, but it's, it's exactly the same thing. So, um, so the first part, I have another piece that I'm working on right now. On. And then Elizabeth Lusche and Jerome Burns will, will join me on stage. And this is a uh, collaboration right now, I wanted to work with, with them as performers and have them as a performer in the center and work with their own personality. So combine new sounds with, with what they are. And I will um, talk a little bit more about the first piece. And now we hear the, the projection of, of the piece Natural Spaces. And it will be projected with these speakers, so everyone who's like not in the box should maybe come more, more to the center, more in the middle. And, and one, one more thing, um, so my, my artist friend from Berlin, she, she will do new paintings for, for, the, for the new sounds. But I also got her, her paintings of her, of her last, last exhibition, and you will see, you'll see a new pain of her paintings.
So that's the first piece, and now I would like to introduce Elizabeth Busche and Jerome Burns. And thanks to Juan Medagan for doing the recording, for mixing, editing, the whole thing. So we start with a piece for Jerome, and Jerome is a huge metal fan, and his favorite band is the Sugar. The Sugar. The Sugar. <laughs> the Sugar. <laughs> yes. So I asked him to give me some some of you. I don't know if we have seen it, but he did uh, lots of Sugar transcriptions of the solos. It's all on YouTube, so check it out. And I asked him to send a few the Sugar licks. So I made a piece for him out of based of uh, his own sugar super formula. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and after that we play a piece for, for Elizabeth and Elizabeth also writes writes her own text and is into poetry. So So each, each of the pieces cover one or two extended techniques as a short demonstration. And these pieces are just, just the first sketches, and these will evolve hopefully in uh, new pieces at some point. So, that's also something very Do you have access to them? So the first piece is Jerome and the Sugar, so Jeruga. <laughs> Second was Let the River, and the last is Over the Tones. And I'm also interested in, in uh, the combination of pieces and bri building bridges between different pieces. So we make one, one big piece between three of them.
the end of the official part, and now we can get drinks or whatever. <laughs> questions, or maybe I have a question for you, or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what I would suggest is that uh, we keep on going for about a bit more time until we do the questions, and then we do a longer break, because this presentation also got a bit longer than expected, so we'll do a bit longer break. But if it's all okay with you, I think it's better to do the uh, discussion part now. Sure. So let's discuss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, using the open time singing into the trumpet, with a, there was a gap, wasn't there, where you were playing the open time? No, the problem is that it's, it's not quite working only an instrument. You don't get the higher open I don't know why yet. Uh -huh. But because then you have to shape your lips, so you can get filtered. So if you go a little bit away from the instrument, so all the other ones get through. Okay, so that's how you do it. You, you, put, some, get the, you put a gap between your mouth yeah, and I tried to experiment, like, mm -hmm. there's this point where I get all the overtones. Because I realized I didn't get in all the overtones through the instrument. Mm -hmm. But I think the, 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 the other two trumpets, uh, the, when they're muffled, they, they, they sort of mimic that. Exactly. You can control the, with the Wawa mute, you can control all the overtones. Yeah, yeah. By the position of the hand. So, Control the old ones by by shaping the tongue. So uh, basically, the, the the last piece was yours, wasn't it? Or was it everything? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's great. But um, so it wasn't the first. All written by Chris. Oh, I just, I just did the play for them. I just okay, okay, based it on their personality. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. The question I wanted to ask is that uh, I find it beautiful that uh, like working with friends as as a composition practice. That's that's not the especially like in cases of like wind instruments. So the actual breath that you're taking in translates into sound, and. And this was like a very visible like, connection that you uh, should have. And I was wondering, um, uh, how, do you want to bring it on stage? Like, is it something that you also want to present? Because like what we have here now is also very intimate setting. Yeah. But it would be very, very different if it could be. Like, <laughs> of course. No, I, I use this here as like kind of a playground and also like for a deadline to get my ass kicked. Because <laughs> um, I had this idea of like writing these five solo pieces for five drum players and then <coughs> having this French artist, Hanna, Anna Montomi, this all paintings by her. She will do a new series on extended techniques and I wanted to have also dancers, so I combined a lot. This was like, the idea was too big that I for months had, hadn't started. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, but is this like a setup that is, uh, you imagine, to continue? And this is I want I want to have like five players and have a bigger bigger performance with mm -hmm. more players and, and like more like you know professional like a way that like, like real pieces and not just like, like space sketches and you get yeah. like tickets and yeah. <laughs> so this is like maybe in a year or something mm -hmm. this is like the first step to get started. Well, that I find a bit of pity because it's like it's just here the connection is like so visible like not only between you all but like between us. Yeah. So, so, uh, in this side, it, it was beautiful. Um, yeah, for some beautiful stuff um, happens. Next. So could you not have a uh, context where you would get, um, it would be a ticket, so, that, so you'd be the selling tickets for a concert, but still somehow retaining a sort of intimate sort of audience performer relation? I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's possible. It's, um, I, mean, is it, I, don't really I think it's like a wider question of, uh, of like what kind of artistic practice do you want to embrace? Mm -hmm. Do you want to promote? And I guess what I want to ask you the production side is like very friendship based. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Intersubjective. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, after the two years, we worked so closely together on this one thing. 
So right now everyone is, has so many different interests than just playing the Stockhausen Opera. So now I'm interested in like, what can every person like, how can they be individually featured with like a piece for them that goes for their strengths and their interests also. Because mm -hmm. I think if the person's really interested in what they're doing, then there's much more happening than just playing a piece. Mm -hmm. To me it was uh, like, uh, it's very suitable for like a sort of musical theatre, uh, so if you dramatise uh, a lot exactly. of the aspects, because it's already a uh, very dramatic, uh, maybe, uh, I mean, I w not just the instrument, but like the way the, the pieces are written and how the personalities weave into the, the <coughs> composition, and so maybe that could be like a, a staged well, I mean, not, it's, it's, it's paradoxical because it's actually a genuine relationship, but it's, it could also be a, a, a staged sort of uh, interaction. Maybe. Well, that's a plan. It's also oh, okay. the, the whole space is, is used, mm -hmm. and, but we didn't have enough time to like, stage something here. So, yeah, yeah, so no, social notes, but, yeah. that, but that's a plan to use like, also the, the whole stage. Mm -hmm. And with Anna Montemi, who will do the paintings, mm -hmm. she also wants to have like, a, a 3D installation with mm -hmm. her paintings. Mm -hmm. So we can also have one technique, for example, as an <coughs> exhibition played at one to have also the, the audible and the visual context mm -hmm. to, to one sound. Mm -hmm. And also play with specialization in the room mm -hmm. and make more divided up. Mm. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, my idea was like more of a sort of drama, like, you know, like with a with a some kind of script, even like where people could like speak or not. But, but yeah, I mean, that's that's how I sort of. You write scripts? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's not why <laughs> anyone writes scripts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there are people who would be very interested in that. But uh, yeah, that's the impression I got because yeah. it's got a lot of potential in that sort of. Uh, so I will be interested because, I mean, this has nothing to do with the music right now, but the same mm -hmm. artist will make paintings based on the, the, the visuals, characteristic of the sounds. So I'm interested if this works at all, this context, if it's like distracting or if it gives something, something more. Is it valuable, the, con the connection? Or doesn't, doesn't it matter at all? But personally, and I, I don't think I've been for everybody, but I would keep it as minimal as, as, as possible. I didn't look at it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like even like, you know, you, you obviously have the trumpet or have a, a, a great knowledge about the instrument. And it's that really um, is audible. When you only play one note and you're just playing with a different harmony, so you look at the whole composition in this like micro space. And, and from that space, like, you know, this is quite different. Like all mm -hmm. the other notes in the trunk are also different. Like this is just like a, a, a bit too uh, far from me. And, and even when we talk about, like, when you were talking about the, uh, how dramatic it is, it also shows very deeply in music. So mm -hmm. for example, um, Zeller was uh, uh, like, mm -hmm. and you started doing the inner sound, which for me, like, immediately, like, it has the inner voice. <laughs> so you don't <laughs> yeah, the actual voice at the time, but like for yourself, like that's yeah. So so there, like in that tiny tiny space, also the drama can work beautifully. But that's me. Yeah, it's actually a bit distracting. Yeah. Okay. Like it's too interesting to look at your guys interacting mm -hmm. with each other mm -hmm. because you move also a lot and you have such a good eye contact. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, like I was distracted every time it changed. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a new piece. When the big picture changes, mm -hmm. it's a new piece. You know, <laughs> it's very very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know where you are. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it also has yeah. to be individual. So mm -hmm. whatever makes sense for people in the audience will always be different. Mm -hmm. um, and if it makes sense for you, also it's also about how do you feel when you perform and. Does it give something to you guys? No. Yeah, I mean, here you always present it kind of like just slides kind of thing, but if you develop it, like yeah. you were saying, it might, if also you you perform and interact with the installation that you're really using somehow, or that's somehow connected, it might, instead of being just distracting, mm -hmm. actually add something into it. But I think that relationship has to be explored Probably. as well. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be just there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you relate with this? paintings yes they have, this was just like I got the paintings two days ago and I wanted to try it out if it works and this is like the for the first piece it was I think her exhibition from last year and these paintings <coughs> are from like two weeks ago from the exhibition she did 
so they don't have anything to do with the music. I just want to try out the format of combining music and and paintings. Yeah. But did you choose to like it? Like it was changing like green and yellow and blue and also after the series. <laughs> Is it also like a conscious choice that you wear blue and he wears green? We just didn't want to wear black, so I said let's put some colors. No, it's weird because like the pieces they also sound different in color wise, which mm -hmm. is also maybe interesting to explore rather than mm -hmm. actual paintings, but like um, yeah. like installation. I mean, they were written like based on their personality, so everyone's of course just super different. Cool. I mean, as a player, I really like the idea that we also have an individual voice now, yeah. <laughs> and um, I think with the colors also. So I thought it's actually a conscious choice that it is changing and shifting. This was the only shot I had in the head. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That we have different different colors. Yeah, but I guess, but also the light. Okay, maybe you I chose the light though ahead of time, right? Or Juan, no, right? No, I was improvising. Oh, Juan, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But he also has worked with us for two years. So yeah, I mean, maybe some of what everyone is seeing is the culmination of four people who have worked together for mm -hmm. take it, who know Chris and know this composition and how he writes, um, and having him written for four people that he knows. And then, uh, sort of, the technical capabilities of someone who's worked specifically projecting our own sounds for two years. Um, so I think things that you're picking up on are there, even if, and are there kind of semi-intentionally. Does that make sense? By just yeah, maybe the product I'm too of detailed. no, no, no. But I think I think I think they're there. But I think maybe they're not unintentional. But it's just a byproduct of having a piece written for people that you know, performed yeah. by people you know. Um, these are the things that end up being highlighted. I think that's my that's my perspective from playing the piece at least. Um, how are you thinking of using the the pictures again? Sorry, um, I, 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 I forgot. Like um, the illustrations with the performance hat. Is it like projected or is it like on? Uh, um, what do you mean these these paintings? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the idea at the end, or well, I mean, what you. Plan to do with the, well, the plan is that it's so let's say if it's five trumpet players and five different techniques, five different pieces, then it will be five different paintings mm. based on each the spectrum analysis. Okay. Mm. So also divided up in the in the space. And would it be on a like, would it be projected like this? Or no, it would, be, it would be printed like really printed, okay. printed or painted on. That's up to her. Mm. And um, the artist would take like sound texture as a reference or. She will take the pictures mm. that I showed from the from the analysis, oh, okay, the yeah. visuals, okay, like based based on this technique, combined with with the sound. Mm -hmm. So playing and singing the last piece, she would like take the spectrum analysis and make a painting based on these visuals as inspiration. I mean, I think I'm interested in like multiple angles mm -hmm. in the same thing, mm -hmm. like connect different art forms because often like different art forms they do exist together but they're not based on the same idea. Mm. And having these pictures, these, these visuals of the actual audible sound, I think it's quite quite interesting mm -hmm. and I would like to see this connection if this is like fruitful or not. Mm -hmm. Of this is like random pictures now. And now I'm only interested in if it could work together. Mm -hmm. Chris, uh, do, do the, the, the painter, does, does she also know you guys? No? Not yet. No. Because that, that, that might be something because you guys work Yes. for so long and everything that happened so maybe if she gets more in contact with you guys and things start to get more because it can also be more personalized on, on that yeah, yeah because that otherwise it could be like something going on the side yeah why you guys are so strong here you know? yes. so maybe yes. maybe think on that right and if you have do you have any free improvisation part or is everything like super private no most of it is more, more free i mean jerome has Jerome is doing lots of free improvisation. So basically I gave I gave him a structure but then and we went to improvise yeah. and I gave him material to, to use and different options how we can use it. But then So it changed every time that you perform spontaneously So this was the sketch for so the first one. This is the material I gave Jerome with like I worked a lot with uh, with Logic Pro <laughs> this summer. So I have like this tool set like 
<laughs> looping, cut and paste, melody, flex time, flex pitch, to like work with the material. So I'm also interested like how do I envision these players? What do I want from them on stage? So I'm interested in, in how can I how can I get what I want from them? But he like it is really it's well written. Like there, I think there are the sort of harmonic things we're listening and sort of improvising which harmonic to go to based on what Chris is singing as well. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that is improvised, and but the material, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's really well written now. It's material really is not improvised, but basically I give some freedom because some yeah. of the te techniques are so hard to write down and so hard to get what you want that you actually it's very hard to notate. And I mean, right now, I trust the players, both of them, so much that I know that they will do best whatever they can do, so. So let's get drinks? I think everyone's hungry, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, Thank you. Thank you.